Hi everyone, I'm Noelle Tredick Gosling and I am a professional violinist. And I'm Dan Gosling, a professional trumpet player. I'm on the faculty for the Music for All Summer Symposium, and which was to be held at Ball State University. But since we couldn't see you last week, I was asked to put together a video and I asked my husband to join me today. And today our topic is gonna to be orchestra etiquette. Which is a fancy word for good manners, how to behave, how to treat others and yourself and the conductor to have a successful orchestra experience. Who are we and why should we care? Well, well, we've been doing this for a while. Between the two of us, we have over 70 combined, combined years, years of professional orchestra yeah, experience. We're old. We're not that old. Yes. In a wide variety of settings, yep. lots of orchestras, lots of different situations. Um, we love playing in orchestras, but it's also very special to us because that's where we first met. Yep. And that's how our relationship started. Yes. Hence the heart. Ooh, our first orchestra experience. Well, look at those pictures. Tell me about that one, Noel. Yours? Uh, no, yours. Oh, yours. God, I don't want to touch yours. Um, I was in my fourth grade orchestra. I was concertmaster that year, and that is a performance, would you believe? Look at all that music on the floor. See, they hadn't had the benefit of right. hearing this talk on orchestra. Very etiquette, true, right? very true. But I all want you to notice my shoes. I loved those patent leather shoes. It's all about the shoes. It is about the shoes. I still love shoes. Yeah, well, my shoes were not patent leathers. I think those are earth shoes <laughs> of the hush puppy variety. And this was probably, I think, seventh or eighth grade. Uh, we had lovely little uniforms uh, that the school provided for us. And I was so proud to play in my band and the orchestra. So we broke this down in uh, four areas of respect. And we're gonna first talk about respect for the conductor. Mm -hmm. Always watch and no talking. Pretty self-explanatory, right? If you're not watching, you don't know what's going on. If you're talking, you don't know what's going on. Watch he or she at all times because they're the ones running the rehearsal, not you. If your stand partner's talking, ignore them. When they stop, you stop. They, meaning the conductor. Yeah. Meaning, when they do this, you should not keep playing. You shouldn't keep playing the next part, show off. Just, just simply stop. It wastes time when you keep playing. It's annoying to listen to, and it is disrespectful. It is right? very disrespectful. No conductor wants to hear the last little bits of their music going while they've stopped. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's trying to oh, here's a big one coming up. No cell phones. No cell phones. Again, Turn them off. should be pretty simple to understand, but we know they're tempting. There's social media, there's texting, but there's no place for that when you are supposed to be paying attention to the music that you're making. Now, if you have a special situation, maybe a family emergency or something's going on, you might want to keep your phone there if you're just expecting a text from a parent or something like that. But otherwise, it should be out of sight, out of mind. Ooh, practice outside of rehearsal and be on time. So we, we squeeze two here on this, on this bullet point. But yes, do your practicing, your preparation outside of rehearsal. That's the time to really do your work on your music. And then when you're in the rehearsal, it's the conductor's time to put it all together. Being on time, mm. what does that mean to you? Don't be late. It actually means being early, right? Oh. If your rehearsal starts at one o'clock, you don't show up at 12.59. Right. In a professional situation, most people are usually there 15 minutes early, oftentimes a half an hour or more, ready to go, preparing themselves for the rehearsal. So if you're sliding at the last minute, it just, it stresses everybody out. That's it stresses not cool. you out, stresses the conductor out, your stand partner. Be on time, be early. Respect for your colleagues. So the first one is to not block anyone's view. I think we, you know, obviously our three Stooges friends here are doing a lot of blocking yes. of his view. So if somebody's behind you, turn around and say, can you see the conductor? The person in front of you should turn around and say, can you see the podium? and adjust your chair so that everyone can see. The entire orchestra should be doing that. Never block 
other other people's views. Warm up does not, does not mean, mean show, show off. off. So again, a warm up is just that. It's different for each instrument, but it should just be that which you need to do to get ready to play. Yeah, how many times have you come into rehearsal and you hear somebody practicing their concerto or their solo piece? Uh, it's that, yeah, don't do that. It's annoying, it's disrespectful, it wastes time. Um, you often warm up with a mute. I you? do, I put a mute on so I don't bother my colleagues. So I'm very quiet, I practice my scales, I practice everything to warm up my hand. As a brass player, I can do the same thing. Yep. I can put in a cup mute in, which I often do, so I can warm up without, being, uh, without hurting the ears of the people around me. Respect your instrument. No, respect oh, we their respect their instrument. instrument. Ah, Meaning, let's see, you see someone's horn or fiddle lying on a chair next to you, and oh, I heard they got a new, new instrument. I want to try that out. No, no, never touch anyone else's instrument. Period. Because what happens when you do? Uh, undoubtedly dropped or scratched. Scratched. Or Something happens to it. Now, if they say to you, hey, would you try my instrument? I just got it. I'm really proud of it. Or it doesn't sound right. Would you check it? Of course, you, you're, you're uh, free to play their instrument. But generally speaking, keep your hands off other people's things. You know how upset instrument. you get when somebody takes their cell phone away. <laughs> That's your instrument. Allow for personal space. Oh, damn it. I have my violin out here. Okay. What if I'm... Anybody sat with somebody where the scroll was right in their face? Oh, I'll go this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Almost oh, worse. okay. And you get impaled by a. By yeah. A now you know what it's like to sit in the string section. So it's a little different when you're in the brass or woodwind section, but you still have to be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, am I playing in a way that's getting in other people's way? No, you shouldn't have to do that. But especially yeah. for those. String players that have to share a music stand, it's especially important to allow for that personal space. And I also want to say, please allow space between yourself and the music stand. I see so many, so many players put the stand so close. You know, uh, if, if you have a wear glasses, um, just make sure that you can see where you are, but don't get in the way of your stand partner. Respect for the music. So first we're going to talk about the actual music itself, the printed page. Take care of it. Uh, don't lose it. Don't let it get all bent up. Don't let your dog play with it. Uh, don't let things fall on it, like you know your sodas or coffee, no drink spills. Um, Wash your hands. Make sure your hands are clean when you're handling it. That music probably doesn't belong to you. It probably belongs to your school or the organization. Or even worse, it might be a rental part, Ooh. a part that has to be sent back to the to the uh, publisher and they hate seeing music come back that's damaged and that usually means they're going to charge the organization for yes that. yeah don't. oh use pencil only for marking how many times have i've seen anything but oh here with no highlighter Highlighters, no no crayons, stop no 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 pens. no 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 yes Yes, and yes. a nice eraser as well, okay? Don't use anything but a pencil on your music. And when it comes to marking, make them clear and legible, but you know, don't cover the page with a bunch of markings yeah. that only you understand. Right. Other people are gonna have to look at that. Yeah, don't, don't write someone's name or code or something. Now, the actual mm -hmm. music that you're making, the music that we hear, uh, one good thing is to learn about the composer. Learn what he or she was thinking, or why they wrote that piece, or what was going on in history, or where they were living at the time that may have inspired that piece. Mm -hmm. That can really help make the piece more interesting for you, and you actually can perform it better when you know what the composer was thinking about when they wrote it. Study the piece, listening with the score to understand where you fit in. I often have my students, when they're learning a piece, I don't have them just play it. I have them put it in front of them, find it on YouTube, and follow the music as they listen to the whole piece on YouTube. Because that where you will understand, that's, it's great to know all your notes, but it's even better to know how those notes fit in. Mm -hmm. Is this a solo part? Is this an accompaniment part? Right. Is this just a rhythm part? Um, that makes what you do in your rehearsal that much more effective because you know where your part fits in. And with YouTube and Spotify, 
there is it's so much easier to to listen to music great performances um it can be found anywhere but you can listen with the score the same score that the conductor's using so not just seeing your part but you're seeing all the parts work together respect Step for yourself. yourself you yourself please take care of yourself get an adequate sleep and eat well please 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 get your what sleep. is adequate sleep adequate adequate sleep i can't say the word easy for you to say adequate sleep is at least six usually seven to eight hours every night yeah. we've done this presentation in, in um, a live setting with uh, young musicians and we often ask them how many of you got less than five hours sleep last night and we're shocked how many hands yeah, go up. there's a lot of them so you need your sleep and make sure you eat well i see an awful lot of monster drinks tons of caffeine Coffee. very sugary foods and drinks um that doesn't fare Snacks. well with being a good player you just take care you know it's once in a while it's great but just take care of yourself and be hydrated drink a lot of water yeah yeah lots of water good posture equals confidence and better sound okay so we're sitting up pretty straight what if we both slouch we both slouch you sound like uh, this oh gosh and our attitude actually changes you talk talking to yourself you just go to the side and say, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, but if we sit up straight, straight ah, you can hear us. We feel, feel rather perky, <clears throat> actually. Yes. So Much more you'll feel better. You'll actually have a better sound. Yep. I don't care what instrument you're playing, especially if you're playing a brass or a woodwind instrument. You need posture, good posture, to deliver the air properly. But you also need it as a string player. Yeah, string players. I see a lot of slouching, and the arm goes down. This goes down. Some people use their knee to kind of. I, I don't do any of that. Uh, and it looks bad from the audience. Look good as an orchestra. Right. As a group, okay. if you're all sitting up, the audience will Absolutely. see that and you actually sound better. Yep. Take care of your instruments. There it is. Take care of your instrument. Right. Uh, string players, please wipe down your violin afterwards. Please, please. You don't want that rosin building up. And please loosen the hair of your bow when you put it away. Have a little cloth on top of your violin. Just keep it clean. It's important. Same goes for any instrument. Uh, playing a brass instrument, make sure that your valves are working, the slides are uh, can, can move easily. Uh, woodwind players, make sure those pads and the keys are working properly. Nothing worse than a yeah. squeak at the wrong time because you didn't properly. Yeah. You'll feel better when your instrument, your instrument looks good. Feels better. Ooh, be positive. Be positive. Be positive. Be positive. That's, a, that's, that's two simple words, but it applies to everything. Be positive about your experience uh, when you come to rehearsal. Um, try not to bring your troubles with you. Don't be a complainer. Don't be, oh, you know, do you? Um, yes, we all have ups and downs in life. But the great thing about music is it can inspire us and make us feel better immediately. And you'll be a better musician and a better colleague if you leave your troubles outside and just be there to make them easy. Playing in an orchestra is fun. It really is. We love it. So make sure you take it seriously. Yeah, that's kind of a contradiction in terms, but when you think about it, anything that you really enjoy doing, you do take it seriously, whether it's a hobby yeah. or whether it's um, making music. Yeah, exactly. So this gives you a little idea of what it will be like when you get back into an orchestra setting right we're we're well aware that a lot of this is about playing together and that's something we actually can't do right now yeah. in the middle of this crazy time we're in but we hope these are some things you can keep in mind when we do get back together very soon we all hope and make better music absolutely and i missed you all this summer so much so much and um i'm so glad that dan was able to join me today and i hope that we gave you a little bit of something you can take home and uh think about in the future absolutely so peace, peace. take care of yourselves thanks so much for spending time with us bye-bye Bye.